my well quit working and to make some of the repairs I had to open it up and anytime you open up your well you expose it to bacteria and the well water should be treated or what they call shocked to kill harmful bacteria depending on your water you may also have to treat your well once or twice a year to maintain quality drinking water after much research and speaking to my county environmental health agent and a couple of well contractors over the years I do a well treatment program that's cost effective and easy to do. I have learned how not to damage my well, my well pump, my septic system, and my lawn and plants. Now some people use regular bleach, and if you do, you can't use the bleach with scents or additives in it, you just want plain bleach, and you have to use more of it, it's not as concentrated as this stuff. The environmental agent I talked to said it doesn't effectively treat a well, but there's a lot of people that say it works fine. So you can make that decision for yourself. After doing my research and speaking with my county environmental health agent, I chose to purchase and use this pool shock, and I'll show you how I do it. All right, here we are out at the well. The first thing I'm going to do, this is a vent pipe here. I'm going to pull this vent pipe off, and that's where I'm going to fill and flush. Now before we get started, I want to be real clear about something, and a big caution. All I have on my well is a hot water heater and a pressure tank. I don't have a water softener, I don't have a water conditioner, I don't have a water purifier, I don't have any of those other things. If you do, this chlorine can damage some of those and you need to find out how to bypass those and how to properly treat your well so you don't damage anything. So be sure to check with your county agent and online to make sure you do it properly if you have any extra appliances like that. Now when you treat your well, you're gonna be without drinking water from your well for two or three days. So before you start this, make sure you have jugs of drinking water for yourself and for your animals. I've got a five gallon pail here and my well is 600 feet deep with 500 feet of water. It depends who you talk to and what product you're using but I'm going to put one pound, 16 ounces, of the pool shock in there. Now some people pour the granulars right in the vent hole. I put some water in a bucket. It's a five gallon bucket. I've got probably a gallon and a half, two gallons of water in there. And I'm going to pour the chemical in the water. You want to be careful about breathing this stuff and surely don't want it to get in your eyes. So be careful when you're using this. I'm going to stir it up. I'm just using the hose that I have. You can use a stick. You don't want to use metal. Now with that all mixed up, I'm going to dump it in the well. Next, I'm going to hook a little hose that I have. Actually, this came off of a, a hose reel that went bad. You can also use a wash machine hose and if you don't have access to a hose bib here at the well you can hook up to a hose bib on the outside of your house and some of the instructions from the agents say to hook up to the one farthest away from your well and now I'm going to turn this on Now when you're running this water through here, I'm fortunate where my electrical lines come through, it just sits, this sits on that little post there. I lifted that up, I've got a little room to do that, so that I've got another breather here. Otherwise if you put that funnel in that vent hole, that's a sealed unit and there's nowhere for it to breathe so your water's going to go in real slow. 
So wherever your electric lines come out, that'll be a help to you if you can open that up somehow, just a little crack, so that it can breathe and accept the water quicker. Now I'm running this water through, circulating it, not because I want to circulate the pump right away and, and, and the water running through here, but I want to rinse off especially the water line and the electrical lines that are running down into the pump that were hit by that strong chlorine mix. So I just want to rinse that off and then I'm going to let it sit. My local county environmental health agent says let it sit for three to four hours before you flush it through and circulate it. So I ran this for two to three minutes. Now I'm going to shut it off. I don't smell any chlorine yet, so I didn't circulate it all the way through. But I'm going to let that sit maybe a couple hours, and then I'll circulate the water. Okay, I let this sit for about an hour and a half. Some people say you don't even need to let it sit. You just turn on the water, <clears throat> circulate it through till you smell chlorine, turn it off, and leave it sit for 24 hours or at least overnight. Well, what I'm going to do is turn the water back on, circulate the water for at least 30 minutes. Everything I've seen says do it for 30 minutes and turn it off or until you smell chlorine. So I'm going to do it for at least 30 minutes and I can leave it running about like that. It'll only take so much at a time. So I can leave it on about that, that strong. That'll flush through, and I'll let that run till I smell chlorine. Now this funnel's a great setup, because I can just stick this in here and leave it, and it'll sit in there. But if you don't have a funnel like that, and instead just have a little funnel like this, what you could do is take a ladder, straddle this, and just tie your hose to one of the steps to hold it in place. Or if you're just gonna do it for 20 or 30 minutes, you can just stay here while it's doing it. But when you're doing this, all you're doing is circulating the well water in itself. You're just getting the chlorine circulated in the pump. So the water's all saturated in there. And I can smell chlorine already, so. And I ran it a little bit before, as you saw. So it's probably good, but it doesn't hurt. Some people leave that running just like that for 24 hours. And you know you're not going to run your well dry because you're pumping it right back into your well, so you don't need to worry about that. And I'll put a link in the description from a county environmental health agent, which will give you instructions on how to treat your well, as well as what pool shock treatments they recommend you can use. So basically, for this well treatment, I'm putting three ounces of pool shock treatment in per hundred foot of water in my well. If you're going to use household bleach, the mix is going to be different. All right, this has been on for about an hour and a half, and really, it should only take about 20 minutes to saturate the whole well. So I'll go ahead and smell it. Oh yeah, it's got a good strong chlorine smell to it. So the whole system saturated. You can turn this off. Or if you turn the hose bib on the side of the house on to do this, you can go turn that off. Take our funnel out and our hose off. Set that back down. Put our vent pipe back on. Good. Put the well cover back on. And we can head into the house to flush those lines. Okay, here in the house, you want to do all faucets and do hot and cold. And the reason to do hot is you want to get it into the hot water heater. Do that until you smell bleach. You also want to run your wash machine. Hot and cold also. You don't have to fill it all the way up. Just enough, depending on how big your house is, just enough to clear the lines. And don't forget to flush the toilets.
Now I am going to let this sit at least overnight and probably 24 hours. During that time, I'm not going to drink any of the water, but I am going to take real quick showers and it might dry out my skin a little bit because of the high chlorine content. And I'll wash my hands and wash dishes. But try to keep as much out of your septic system as you can because the chlorine will kill the good bacteria in your septic tank. And don't forget to do your hose bibs outside. Now these can run as long as you want because it's not running back into your septic system. But be careful of your plants and grass because the chlorine might kill them. Now after you run the chlorine through your system, you might notice some of the faucets or your wash machine running slower. There are screens or filters in each one of those and you might need to clean them if there's debris. Now this one's so far away from the house, I'm going to have to let it run a little while until I smell the bleach. Make sure it gets out here. All right, I got everything flushed. I'm going to let it sit overnight, up to about 24 hours, and then I'm going to flush it. It's been a little over 24 hours, and everything should be treated, chlorinated, bacteria killed. We should be ready to go. The last thing that you need to do is run the chlorinated water out of your well and the system because it will damage your septic system, kill all the good bacteria in your septic tank, and you do not want to do that. So when you're purging the system, you want to hook up to an outside hose bib, or as I've done at the wellhead, and run that off until you don't smell chlorine anymore. Now I only have four gallons a minute in this well. So I definitely want to be careful that I don't run it dry. It's a deep well, 600 feet, so I've got a lot of water in there. But I do not want to run that dry and burn up the pump. So I've set this up in an area where I can keep an eye on it. And if it stops running water while I have it on, I'm going to run and turn that off and let the well fill back up. So you got to be real careful about that. And make sure you hook up to an outside hose bib and in an area where you don't mind grass or plants being damaged where the water's running off. Because this is chlorinated water and it will be a little hard on plants and grass and that sort of thing. This has been running a little over an hour. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off for about 20 minutes. But I'm also going to check and smell for chlorine. And I can't smell chlorine real well just sticking my nose up to the water. So what I do is put it in my hand, get my hand wet, and smell my hand. And then I can smell if there's chlorine or not. If you have trouble with that, you can get strips that will test for chlorine content and water. It's definitely strong chlorine smell, so I'm going to let it rest for 20 minutes and then run another hour. All right, I had to run this well five times, an hour at a time, with 20 to 30 minute intervals in between each run to let the well recover to get the chlorine out. And I think we're there now. Yep. All clear. I don't smell any chlorine, finally. And that's how easy it is to disinfect your well. We're ready to drink water, take showers, cook, do laundry, whatever we need. If this video was a help to you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online.